what is going on folks this is Antoine here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to teach your additional remote codes from an existing remote control that will not auto program to your dish network system now if you're not familiar with the auto program process I'm gonna post a link above um, it's real simple will take like two minutes tops but if your codes not in there you can use the learner method and I know you guys see that Roku remote right there. That's right. You can also learn your Roku remote through a Dish Network remote. So Dish Network, best technology. Their remotes, you know, always keep some around from back when I used to work with them because they just make great universal remotes. So looking at our three Dish Network remotes I have here. So this remote right here, this is not a learner remote. It's a very old style remote. Though it still makes a good universal remote if the code for your TV is in it, but it is not a learner remote. So I just want to put that out there just in case anybody had any questions in the future. Now this remote right here, this is a UHF only remote. You cannot um, teach it manually. You have to do that through the on-screen menu on your Dish Network set-top box. And it should be easy to get to, get to. Just go to menu, system setup, or re menu, remote controls, and go to a teach codes. You'll find that. And you can tell if your remote is UHF only. You just look on the back. It says 32.0 UHF. Some of them will say UHF slash IR. Some of them will just say IR. So that one. <clears throat> and our next one is our 20.1 infrared remote. It also has the learner window on the side just like this one and this one can be done manually mainly because it's infrared so teaching your remote control well teaching your additional remote control new new tricks is fairly easy all you need is a flat surface and you're going to take your remote control we're going to first use our television remote so you want to make sure there's a distance no further than four inches between the infrared on your remote and the side window on the left side of the dish network remote make sure it's not no more than four inches of space right there so you just want to get them go ahead and get them lined up let me just make some room here all right there we go so we want to press and hold the TV button Press and hold the record button. Press the button on our Dish Network remote that we want to program. Just tap it. And then on your separate remote, you're just going to slightly tap the button. See, you see how it blinked off and on? We just tapped it one time. And then if you want to keep going, just keep on going. So we're going to use input for our volume down. Go ahead and tap that. Blinked off and on. And let's. All right, let's use recall as menu or source. Go ahead and tap source. Blinks off and on. So then after you go through all your buttons, you got everything set up, you're just going to press any of these buttons at the top, any of the white buttons, not the red buttons, and it's going to save it. And it's going to lock those codes in for you. So see how I press satellite. The remote is in satellite mode. I'm going to put it back in TV mode. So what we're going to do next is... We're going to, all right, so as you can see, it took, I'm about to press the input button, and it's going to turn down the volume, and I'm going to press the menu button, it's going to turn the volume up. All right, folks, so we got our Roku remote here, and one thing you have to do is you have to either unplug your Roku or cover it up with something, because if the Roku is responding to the buttons that you're pressing, the Dish Network Dish Network remote is not going to be able to lock the the buttons in. It's not going to recognize your key press because another device has already responded to it. That's just what I noticed. So, for the Roku remote, you want to go through the same process, and keep in mind you want to move quick. You want to move at a nice steady pace. Press and hold your record button, and then for the Roku, we're just going to use our color button. So we're going to use the red. Then we're going to use Netflix. Just go ahead and give it a tap one time. Then let's move over to the green button. Then we're going to use Hulu for that one. So we're going to lock that in. And then in the yellow one, we're going to use CBS. 
And then for the blue button, oop, we're going to use our sling key right there. Now, one thing I want to show you guys as well is if you press a button and you don't press the corresponding key on your original remote, you're going to get that three blinks. That basically means you have to start over, not start all the way over from scratch, but you have to press another button to try to get that program. Then again, to lock it in, is that it? Go ahead and cycle through. Lock it in by pressing any of these four buttons at top. And always remember what imp or what mode that you programmed it in so you can go back to it and um, lock it in. So next, let's get our Roku plug back up and um, show you guys what we got. So here we are at the Roku screen, and I believe I used TV mode. So press the red button. That should take us to Netflix. All right, folks. So there you have it. Teaching your Dish Network remote new tricks. Um, it will not work on an Amazon Fire Stick remote because Amazon Fire Stick remote is not infrared. So. But other than that, folks, I hope you learned something for this video. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time.